So friends, please join me in opening your hearts and opening your minds and welcoming Shonda Buchanan. So I like to um, introduce myself in the, the way of my, um, my ancestors. <clears throat> my name is Shonda Buchanan. I'm also known as Inyesha, Inyesha Kalfani in the community. Uh, have traced my heritage, my American Indian ancestors back 11 generations to the Eastern Band, Cherokee, Kahari, and Choctaw on my father's side. Of course, I am African and there's some European thrown in there. <laughs> oh, that's something. Anyway, so the songs I'm gonna sing tonight are songs that I've learned on what we call the Red Road or the trail, but I also have poems, and that's how I got this, this position sitting here in front of you is I'm one of the COLA artists, and I'm incredibly grateful to the Department of Cultural Affairs to grand performances for this amazing space. Everyone, everyone back here that you see looking cool like that guy right there, everybody has just been amazing and the sound people and everything. So just incredibly grateful and thank you for being here. So um, this is a song that I learned in the, uh, one of the lodges, one of the sweat lodges. And you have to forgive me, I have my powwow drumstick because I couldn't find my hand, hand drumstick. So we'll see how it, how it sounds. <laughs> and I sing this in a good way. Yada. 
for the ancestors of this land. They were African, Indios, Mexicans, mulatas and mulatos from Sonora, Sinaloa, Mexico, and a Spaniard trying to earn their wings on the trail to heaven. Cornmeal and charcoal in their corners of their pouches and bone cracking wagons, their hunger, their stardust dreams and 10 Spaniard dollars a month for the entire family sewn into the earth kissed hems of their wives skirts. Did these first settlers know when they sang what they would be come? When their songs weighed heavily around their ankles, riding exhausted horses into San Gabriel mission gates, perched on Kich Tonva Gabrielano lands, pulling magic out of their hair like thorns and knives and love letters and crystals and cocklebugs and fireflies and river basin dreams. Did they know the stories we would one day tell. So, thank you for that. <laughs> so that's the first poem in a collection of poems that I'm writing about the first settlers of Los Angeles who were, uh, in fact, from Mexico, but they were mixed race like me and like many of us in this audience. They were mixed bloods. Uh, and their journey was a thousand mile trek from Mexico. First, they stopped at the San Gabriel Mission and then they took the rest of the journey here to Olvedo Street, which how many of you have been to Olvedo Street? So you already have participated in history if you've been to that corner of our world here in Los Angeles. But that's where they, they founded their first settlement next to and near the indigenous people who were already here. So we have to be really careful with that word of founders and settlers, right? We have to teach our children what that actually means. So they came here. And I get to essentially unearth them with my poems. And I'm incredibly grateful to the, uh, to the Tanva uh, elder who came here and shared his story and shared his words. That's an incredibly special moment for me and for us um, and particularly since I am also on the red road, I'm also a sun dancer, I am also carry a pipe and, and incredibly honored and grateful to do it like that. So this next poem actually in my mind encompasses what it means for the Pablo Doros or and if I'm saying something incorrectly, please shout it out and you know, change, you know, uh, uh, change and help me with my Mex you know, Spanish pronunciation, but the Pablo Doros, the settlers becoming Angelinos. It had to be 11 families, the number of fulfillment and infinite vision, not nine, not 10, not 13, 11 families the African, Indios, Mexican, Spaniard, two in a human soup of settler dreams, the 12th, a Filipino family were somehow left on the trail because the sacrifice has to happen in every good Catholic story. And there has to be biblical balance. This grand design was already 10 years in the making. They needed order, a sign, congruence, and the number squirreled around in Junipero's head, 11, like Constantine. We could sometimes choose God's will, yes? Because Franciscans respected twinnings, duality, the flesh and the spirit, the body and the soul, heaven and earth, peace and war. The Trinity would come later. Spain sent the doves with a note, kissed, blessed, stamped on, rolled frankincense, scented by the Franciscan cross. 11 families should go. 22 adults and 22 children. 44 pableteros, 
settlers. Who would make first contact with the natives? The sun followed them around like a shadow when they got there. They tread into the mouth of the San Gabriel Valley, thinking they were aligning the wheel of time. Thank you all. <clears throat> so this next song is a song I want to um, sing for the Shumash ancestors. Uh, I learned this song in a sweat lodge in the mountains of Los Padres National Forest, uh, Mohutasan a bear camp, and I'm incredibly grateful that I was able to learn this song and I'm able to sing this song um, to share with you all. And on this drum, it's interesting, uh, the grandpa referenced my hand drum, and this drum was actually given to me, in fact, by someone who sent it to a friend of mine who knew that I do these kinds of programs, and they said, she's red black, right? Which for us, red black means black and native, Afro native, African American and American Indian heritage. And so they said, she does programs, right? I'd like her to use this drum. It's been blessed on black Indian land, red black land. So I'm really honored to be able to sing this song for the Shumash ancestors of these lands. <clears throat> And it's a children's honoring song for you children in here and the children in us. California, no one ever asked the indigenous Indian if he wanted to change his name, his title, his race, his fire, his camp. No one asked the mulatta to birth babies only to be bonded out like loaves of bread and unclaimed dreams, erased by a Spanish flag. No one ever asked the mixed blood if she liked her new status. The cot by the fire, unfamiliar night sounds, the secret scribblings of priests about her, and this experiment on the river. But she earned two cents for every half-breed baby she produced like a pimento seed. No one ever asked her, or her husband, or her children, if they liked their new hyphenated history. <laughs> Truth talker. <laughs> so the collection of my poems, it's called Artificial Earth. And when I was thinking about, uh, I am a poet, yes, I am a professor at Loyola Marymount University. I've been a university professor for 20-ish years, somewhere around there. I know I look 12, that's okay. I know that, doesn't crack. Um, my, so the book is called Artificial Earth because I, I'm always thinking about what is that like to, to start something on top of something else, right? What is that like to just create a thing? What are the 
the, the births that occur simultaneously with the small deaths that happen, right? And I'm always thinking about that as an artist as well. And this next poem, it's the title of my, uh, title of my collection of poems that I wrote with this COLA grant. Again, thank you. Thank you to the Department of Cultural Affairs. And I'll introduce this with another song. Um, and this song is a, what we call a song for the mouse in the south. And uh, how many of you, I'm not gonna ask if you have mice, but how many of you have watched mice? Just kind of watched how they peek out of a corner, like, yeah, like, you know, they're kind of hesitant, they're smelling the room, and you know, what's going on, what's happening? So for us, when we talk about the mouse of the south, when we sing the song, we're thinking of the patience that the mouse has and the patience that we have to have with ourselves, right? Uh, because something's going to happen and hence artificial earth. Think of that moment where you need that patience for yourself, with your children, with your loved ones. bodies are like stars, filling up the turquoise blackness with bright, terribly bright dreams, floating like hummingbird wings, Oaxaca seeds into moist gullies, onto the landscape, ocean, dropping pollen, red tail hawk feathers, conch shells, barley, and rice on the trail, praying this is the last stop. History is a fallen star illuminating the lattice body of murdered tribes, crisscrossing prairies and deserts and fields and plains across state and national parks in glowing trails of bleached bones we can see from Mars. Blood filling their lungs like ice from space, like trembling newly named freshwater rivers they once recognized, now running through them like a shaft of hot white colonizing light. Our bodies are the rivers. Desperately peeled wetness split in two at the fork by planned cities, townships, states, San Joaquin, San Gabriel, San Fernando, and all the sand soak up our black mud bodies, our dreams of ravenous worms licking underfoot as they climb the arroyos, up shale ridges that were once kissed by more water than you can imagine. Dolphins swam over mountain peaks. The Shumash and the Kitsch Gabrielano Tanva spoke dolphin before Spanish ships crashed here. Before missions, the entire world spoke turtle and whale, bi and trilingual. Yet we kept those secrets to ourselves and followed the river, a river you would have followed too 
If for no other reason than you were undone, a grandmother's story unraveling at the silver seams and you more thirsty than you've ever been in your life, confused by the sound of settlers of artificial earth as your children grew corn husk thin, so thin history could no longer see them, history could see through them until their bodies became reservations and deserts, beautifully bleak, an axum of scales, pearls of sand, fire ants sliding into crevices that led to the navel of the earth. Deserts are like rivers too, drowning you in its dinosaur mountain. Silence kisses you quiet into submission like no sound has ever kissed you before, and still you stay close to the desert river, to the ridiculously drawn boundaries, boundaries drawn for eagles and bears, mountain lions, by leaders and priests, by war. But we stay there, close to family and our beads, for the promise of life, of love, of sovereign bliss, even as they ripped our sweat lodges down, burning our willows, our rattles, pressing their thumbs on our tongues so we couldn't speak our languages as we released our woman blood, dreamt songs quietly, made fry bread, made grief out of blankets, out of army burlap sacks and rations, made relatives with all the other oppressed hoping we had come to the end of a journey. History is a cartographer's kiss on our Indios licorice tender bodies, one we did not ask for. History is a Shumash dolphin, her face pressed against the democratic wave. History is a weapon, mindless in its cyclical fury. History is a Yucatan forest, a flower, a fly. The river Niger flinging golden rocks at the sun, landing like an Afro-Mexican Mexica Toltec from the past present on a downtown Los Angeles street. History is a sacred fire that never extinguishes because we have never left. The flame, precious, cool embers, percussive, once a soloist tree, now burning bright, burning brightly, our bodies so bright. So the ashes and our prayers and the smoke could rise, becoming one memory, reverently pushing and pulling, stacking the medicine in the fire pit moving our prayers around in the beautiful hot blackness and they rise and they raise us again and we carry it all. We are this history, a gorgeous not need beast humming at the okra moon. History is a mestizo body, a mulata, a half breed, no longer full blood anymore. All my relations, a whole matakuyase. I love when my poems fly away. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is um, one more song because I want to be mindful of the time. And I shared a couple of poems with you. Hopefully, um, this book possibly will be picked up by a publisher and out by next year. But uh, this is a, a song that I want to include you all in. So the first 11 families, they were African, they were mulatto, mulatta, mestizo, indios. If anyone is interested, you can Google that and you'll see all of the faces that look like the faces in our audience, look like the, the brown, the, the dark skin, the light skin. They look like us, right, this mixed blood. A uh, group of people. But I want to sing this song for those African ancestors because it honors mine as well. And I think that we all have a little bit of, you might have an African ancestor on your tree. Somebody, maybe. <laughs> yes, you might have some Afro Indios on your tree. 
So I'm going to include you all in this, in this last song. Uh, and this is a song that I learned in African dance class. And where are my African dance class people? Dr. Kim Benjamin, and who's S. Pearl? Is in, yes, African dance people in the, in the audience. So um, this is one of the songs that we were taught. Um, and uh, in fact, I have to say too, when my first grandson was born and whenever I sang this song to him, he would just look at me like, are you calling me as an ancestor? Like, I know I'm one of your ancestors. <laughs> like, I know I'm one of your ancestors. So it was just a, a beautiful feeling to have this. Um, but I'm incredibly grateful that I was able to share some of the songs and some of the poems with you. So this is how it goes. I might have to get up so you might not hear me um, from the microphone, but I can be loud, so I'm gonna do that. Maybe I should start it with the microphone. Okay, it goes like this. I forgot to say, this is an ancestral table. So if at any point during our performances, if you'd like to write the name of an ancestor on one of those sheets of paper, it's under the glass bowl. One of the ancestors from Los Angeles, uh, one of the ancestors from wherever you're from. But what I want to do at the end of this is I'll burn those and I'll take them and put them in a sweat lodge fire so that those prayers will go up like that. But I think for me, because a lot of my work is ancestral work, I like to include the audience in that. So if you want to do that, feel free. Now I'm going to come back out so we can sing. together Puse Puse Babadina I love it I love it thank you so very much I'm incredibly grateful thank you thank you and thank you to everyone <laughs> Sean W Cannon how can we find you on social media? It's at Shonda Buchanan. Her website, shondabuchanan.com.